so we've got the 50th anniversary of the Aboriginal Embassy coming up and we're going to talk about some very serious matters. But before we do that, I want to show people something. This here is just off away from the city and it's not far away from where the War Memorial is, yeah? And it's where the old CSIRO building is to be. Dave Johnson brought me up here. So when we take all this off, we begin to see something. Now this is belongs to the traditional owners here, in this their country. Now, what we have here, coming from right around here, if so if you look there, right around there, comes right through here, down into there, through here, and then you have another river coming in here, and you have this here river catchment coming into there. And so what you've got here is, a, is an Aboriginal artwork that's demonstrating the connection to the waters within the Canberra region. And so this is why Canberra would have been a meeting place. And here on this rock, this is a very important rock for Aboriginal people and for white people to understand that this thing exists here in Canberra, looking down on top of the city, looking down on top of Parliament House and looking down on top of Lake Burley Griffin. So we go up here now in the sunlight and we talk more. What we have here, this is another uh, another rock that's not too far away from the other where the rivers meet. But here, um, through weathering and because nobody's been here for a long time, here you can see from here and he's running along here and his head comes up here. This is the snake. Yeah, here. So he's there, and there are other other um, patterns here that look like him. Your foot just there, and then there's there's other other stuff here that's over years that's now sort of withered away. But you you can get a story. But we know that this one here is the snake. So this fella here connects with those rivers. Why am I starting off this this conversation like this? It's because this these are the ritual statutes that belong to our people. And our people need to understand the importance of ritual statutes. And that's going to be part of the discussion that's going to take place at uh, Albert Hall on the 27th of January, 2022. Now, in this, we are going to be talking about Aboriginal law and custom. And we will define Aboriginal law and custom. Now that Aboriginal law um, is now recognised in the modern courts, after Mabo as being equal to that of the Western society, of the occupying state, then we need people to understand how powerful that mean, that is. And we have to go through this in great detail so that our people understand that our law is now part of the Australian legal system and the political system does not have the power to override that law that belongs to us. That's our sovereign identity. That's who we are as a sovereign people. We've had courts in this country now recognise that we are neither citizens nor aliens. Okay, so the issue here is that um, now the Australian society, by virtue of the fact that by their own admission are an occupying society, um, then we have to sort this out. And we can't ask them to sort this out for us. This is our task. Our task is now to sort this out for them. And so there is a, now we're in a position where coexistence is a must. And coexistence at this point in time is not all this year of falsified um, propaganda about local domestic state treaties. Um, that is a furphy and um, I can say that because I was researching at the federal level to develop the national framework for a national treaty. Now, since that uh, 1985 when the Bob Hawke Labor government shut down the NAC, uh, an elected Aboriginal body of people, um, then I, n I, I pursued um, all the stuff that I was researching from after 85. Um, and I went through and I did a whole lot of number of things. 
But m most importantly, I've now come to the conclusion that as a people, we are a sovereign, independent race of people of multiple languages yeah, and um, one thing in common, and that is our ritual statutes right across this country tell us of the creation. And so we are the first to this land and we come from a celestial based law. And these here tell us of that celestial law. And so what we have in Aboriginal society is a, is a, is a welding of two laws. Yeah. One is the social construct which is governed by the people. The second is the senior law men and women who are the Inaras, the Jilpi, and the other senior hierarchical people who control that sacred law and have responsibility for it. Now, that is the equivalent of what the white people call ecclesiastical law. It comes from the creation, it comes from God, as they say in their, in their Bible, and they have the book called the Bible, which talks about all these prophecies and all these teachings of the of, of Jesus, the man who came here to show people how they should be living. And that's, he's passing on celestial law. That's called ecclesiastical law, and it's canon law. Those laws are not to be interfered with by the common law legal system. And the parliamentary committees and parliaments cannot pass laws to dictate how that law shall be governed and how it shall operate and who shall be answerable to who in that regard. The law belonging to them is answerable to those who control the church and they have a hierarchical network within that church. And it's the same as our people, we have the same structure coming from the celestial law, come which are part of the ritual statutes written in stone, carved in trees, carved in our sacred objects. These are the sacred stories of the creation. These are the sacred laws of our people and they are controlled by our elders and by those senior law men and women. And we have to now work out which pathway we're taking. Do we go white way or do we go black way? Everybody says, and the greatest fear of our people is if we go black for the way, well then white fella gonna cut off the pension, gonna cut off our unemployment, gonna cut off our disability pension, so how are we gonna live? We, a lot of us can't go out there and live in the bush anymore and catch, catch kangaroo and the rocks are too hard on our feet when we take our shoe off and we get bindi eyes all over the place. So, so our position basically is now, as a people, we have to make this decision right now. We got, we got educated blackfellas and other blackfellas who are making, working with government, saying this is what Aboriginal people want. Now, um, if you look at all those consultations they've had in the past, well, consultations basically also means we're telling you what we're going to do for you. And we're consulting with you to tell you that. Yeah? And we don't need your informed consent. Now, so this uh, 27th talk at Albert Hall um, is what we want to do is focus on where do we go from here and how do we now put this, um, put our positions in a place where we can assert our right of self-determination without interference, right? And so the task now is in front of us and the challenges is now for us to take up. And um, I will have, we will be talking about um, decolonisation. First of all, we start off with colonisation. What does colonisation truly mean? Yeah. Secondly, we talk about decolonisation. What does that mean and what does it mean in the, con in the, in the modern day context? Yeah. And the second thing is, when we talk about self-determination, the next step, then what are we talking about? Yeah. And do we all agree that that's the pathway we've got to go down and be self-determining? And so if we're going to be self-determining, how do we do this? My proposal, once we have this um, Royal Albert Hall meeting on the 27th in, in, in Canberra, my objective is to then look for people to support funding us independently. I don't want any government money. Independently to go out there and we have town hall meetings with our nations, yeah? A lot of nations have got native title, yeah? 
But whether they're happy or not, I don't know. But native title is only one aspect of this, yeah? And quite frankly, we were not done over in native title, yeah? There's much more than just saying we got recognition, yeah? There's a lot more to it. And this is something that we're going to be talking about in terms of the second discussion or the fourth part of the discussion at the, uh, Royal Albert Hall is about what is the legal status and the legal right of our people within this country to assert our right of self-determination as a sovereign people. And where does native title fit into that? And where does all these other acts fit into it? And so we want to be talking about that as well and, and flesh all that out so that we show that these people are run, running um, a dictatorship and this dictatorship comes from an occupying power. And by their own admissions in 1983, 83, yeah, in a parliamentary report called 200 Years Later by the Senate Standing Committee on Constitution, by the Parliamentary Committee on Constitutional and Legal Affairs, when they looked into the Makarata and Treaty or Compact, they make their admissions yeah, that a true appreciation of the existence of, of what, what, what was happening at the time when the boat people arrived in Australia um, in 1788 was that sovereignty inerred in the people at the time, okay? So we never ceded that sovereignty, so it was never taken from us. That's their admission. That's in their report to the National Parliament of Australia. The second part to that is that they say that um, we are an occupying power. And so because they're an occupying power, there are international laws now that they have to abide by. And, and they have to look at. And so now it's our game, and I'm hoping that, the, uh, that what we can get out to the people on the 27th of January is to show you that there is a doorway open now for us um, to start, our road, start on our road to being self-determining and to apply our law to our people. And they have to accept it because they can't interfere with our law, we can't interfere with their law, their parliament can't interfere with our law, we can't interfere with their parliament. So we've got these two now very big forces in this country sitting there looking at each other like that. We don't need a gun, we just need to use this. Our people taught us how to, our people were smart, our people did not go after and were not land hungry and kick and kill people and take over their lands, not like these people who come from Europe, because that's their culture. That's what they grew up with. That's all they know. You know, they were doing that to each other for over a thousand years, two thousand years, yeah? So what we need to do is set our pathway, not worry about anyone else, yeah? And let's forget about the white man's courts and legal system, because we're going to do it our way, yeah? and there is a pathway to do it. See you all at the Albert Hall.